county that I'm going is Kilifi County, so I have first to navigate the political process. Uh, wherefore, I should emerge as a winner, God willing, and then move into office as a CEO of, of the county. Purposes of, uh, because of the capital, uh, availability of capital by force of educating the children. Now, if at the end of the month a farmer has 2,700 shillings, 3,000, 4,000, if you leave that money with the farmer and not take it to school or any other expense, that farmer then grows slowly but rapidly because the money then remains with that farmer. And that's our intention to ensure that we release um, the people of Kilifi to have money and it's to remove some of these burdens that are expensive on them. Uh, schooling is very expensive for them. It may sound um, like probably the smallest way of, of dealing with it, but that small way in its multiple creates billions of money available for the farmers who then can use it and it can circulate within communities. And therefore the community starts growing. The uh, crops that we have, the cash crops, needs to be multiplied. I do think that it's possible uh, also to put up immediately plants that take uh, the, the, the students, oh, so children from you know, um, the streets, not streets per se, but in areas where they're not productive. For instance, we have an emerging trend of um, abuse of drugs in Kilif, uh, Mtuapa, Kilif, and Malindi, and, and some rural areas such as Kalolini and Marekani now are emerging as centers for drug abuse. We think we can stop it because it's not very deep yet. That can be controlled. We know we already have areas of people who need um, to be corrected and therefore correction of facilities will be ideal for, for me. But those that are exposed but have not been affected yet are the ones that we want to rescue immediately. We must therefore create jobs because it's out of frustration also and that the world in Cliff has created um, an environment for that to be able to subsist and that to be able to be sustained and also for that to thrive. So we say that uh, for that purpose alone we think we should put up structures of employment, for instance, um, capital intensive areas like industries such as um, uh, the coconut one which is most available, um, the coconut one which is most available, um, the fish one, uh, the fishing one which is also most available. Um, when we do that then we suck the people out of the streets and areas of abuse and availability for abuse, those areas and bring them to the fold of employment. When we do that then slowly we are converting them into people one that are busy and two, that are not um, exposed to environment as will be harmful to the youth. When you do that then, plus the fact that we've made education available for everyone, with the fact that parents have money, you're bringing a society slowly and growing it up, uh, so that then it, it grows into a society of, of, of endowment. Um, that which they didn't have, they now have. Um, not a lot of money, but little growth of wealth uh, which can be protected. Eventually, uh, we will have a society that can be counted on in terms of small little entrepreneurial uh, production and sustenance. As when it matters, the government can buy land, give it to the people and loan them. So attach a certain cost on that parcel of land where people can pay slowly until such a time that they've got the payment. And that payment can be such that it's either negotiated within the group uh, that is set of these that are set Alternatively, the individual, because those that can pay faster and those that can pay slowly. So because um, the circumstances will be as valuable as uh, the extensive of the problem itself, then we say that that is a solution that shall be done by and must be done by national government. However, um, where it matters, we will put a kit um, either directly from government and the resources and allocation that we get, plus other uh, income units and grants as we will harness uh, all over within and without the country so that then we are able to put a, a fund um, and a land a fund bank that otherwise then its role is to ensure nobody loses a house, no house is demolished uh, and the spot of problem then is uh, solved once and for all by buying tracts of land and uh, allocating them to the people through structures like I've said and will be available in the circumstances. As a lawyer, I'm passionate about that um, process because I do understand that land is a primary factor of production and it settles people towards um, enduring the world circumstances and lifestyles as will be permitted. And upon settlement, um, then they will become entrepreneurs, they will get into production of uh, both goods and services. And therefore you have a society that moves together because it's been endowed with the stability of ownership of land. Um, 
Uh, and therefore, the question as to what you do in the first 100 days becomes a, most, uh, a very good thing. Like I've said, I must settle all children in school and release uh, the families um, so that they start accessing work. Number two is uh, I must make sure that um, there are industrial, um, heavy industrial investments that immediately supply, lab, supply employment opportunities uh, and, and it sucks uh, the communities. Uh, especially the most vulnerable ones such as youth immediately into into uh, employment when we do that then we stabilize the society slowly um, and by and by then we deal with uh, um, those that are slightly stable in terms of uh, the exposure uh, at the moment for instance men and women um, the women we intend there's a process that we've done in Kilifi uh, the current regime has put up a fund for the Begu uh, fund. Begu fund basically is a seed fund that is intended to be able to entrepreneur people um, and they start production and uh, they are able to uh, start their own businesses that um, are endowed towards uh, the common good will be uh, settle them into, into income and environment. But this is what I have to say. It has been implemented probably with the least structures. Uh, I say that Begu Fund must be directed in such a manner that there is uh, outreach programs um, where the supervisory element from us as, as, as county. When we supervise uh, the skills that we have imparted on those that benefit for that big fund, um, which is basically uh, a bank uh, that gives uh, uh, funds to people to start uh, entrepreneurs, we need first to teach the people and arm them and equip them with skills for purposes upon which then they can uh, be in production. Number one. Number two, and, and most importantly, is that make sure that you sustain the business through support structures. Uh, deploy officers that continue to ensure that the people are, um, are responsible for the money, the public money that they get uh, for purposes of then creating a circle of a bank upon which others can get on and on. We hope that um, the, the, our intention that this money is not um, is not interest earning at all, at all, at all, uh, continues to be uh, the subsidy upon which people then are endowed into income producing activities. Uh, the other variable to that is that that fund shall be a bit different to the disabled. The disabled will be funded, but the money shall not come. Um, I think we need to start up the, the, the disabled people different. So when we give them grants, they should not be able to return the money or pay them back. That's, that's a different uh, bracket uh, compared with the family or the people who can live. Then the youth. The youth will try as much as possible to suck them into employment. Those that are available for purpose of training and getting into entrepreneurs, because those that can take risks in life are more skilled, are more innovative as a youth. We think we can do that. But the other bit that is important for me, because um, having grown up in uh, very poor um, uh, rural uh, areas of Kilifi, I do know what it means to go to school. I'll make sure that um, there are um, universities that crop up in areas. What the universities do is they give chances to the people of Kilifi, in Kilifi, uh, to join those institutions of learning and therefore creating entrepreneurship as fast as possible and channel production of skills uh, in Kilifi. But that's not enough. Uh, when they come out, of course, they have to find that we've created employment units for them to be able to be absorbed. Science research is very important in Kilifi because of uh, the nature of that environment. For instance, um, the nature of diseases there uh, has attracted a lot of research work from international organizations. And also Cambridge has pitched tent in Kilifi as one of the institutions that's visible uh, for purpose of research. We're saying if we put more research institutions, um, first employment, and two is, is that then we endow Kilifi with skills, especially if we bring out the investors to support those research centers uh, upon which we can um, be able to digest uh, that environment of Kilifi uh, to improve on it. Uh, we need also uh, research centers in agriculture. We have Kari, a very big institution in Kilifi that basically has not shown, showcased uh, what it does for purpose of transformation of the population of Kilifi. Those are areas that probably we will probably also um, um, partner with, for instance, uh, in terms of training uh, for purposes of deployment of that research skill and skills uh, that are impactful on society itself. And, and so, um, so much uh, to do in Kilifi, um, 
But I do know that uh, that in itself it will not be enough without getting into office. What's important is first to, like I said, walk the process of um, uh, political, the political process, and then transform uh, very fast into a chief executive officer with corporate skills that fuse both politics and the corporate um, stability for purposes of transforming Kilifi rapidly. Poverty is at its highest. Let me tell you one thing. Water is a very big problem. Big problem. Very, very big problem. But our water in Kilifi is being taken from Kilifi to Mombasa. Mombasa, therefore, at first we knew we are, we are supporting Mombasa because the people of Kilifi were laying on Mombasa for employment and support. We do not need Mombasa now. I think we can stand on our own as Kilifi. And therefore the water in Kilifi must be used by people of Kilifi until they, they have reached that satiable um, levels such that they can then export it. Export means uh, income. And therefore I don't know why Mombasa gets water from Kilifi without paying a shilling for it. Probably that's a discussion we have uh, as at the time because this is a time that you choose your enemies. Until you are in there, then we need to ask the hard question as to why Kilifi is being compensated for uh, export of water from but water is available because we, are whole, we have a whole coastline that has a water bank in the ocean. And that can be used also, like I said, in desalination for purpose of getting water to every household. Actually, there are very few counties that can have a water uh, bank such as the ocean, uh, if you look at the upcountry up country counties. So we do have water uh, in the ocean, we do have water in the rivers, but we, we, we are not harnessing that and harvesting it uh, and using it appropriately with the activity that it deserves. So we say, I say that um, uh, technology today, there's no, with technology today, there's no excuse why uh, we can't desalinate and uh, supply water as it should be. And um, uh, like I've said, Kilifi is probably the best destination for investment in this country. And I'm not kidding on that. I, I, I'm looking at the, the land, land ownership in, in Kuali. It's a bit delicate because people there, there's no stability. It can flare up any time. Uh, we have a history of land uh, dispute flare-ups in, in Kuali, and therefore it may not be very attractive to investors. Uh, once in a while, uh, we have even um, ethnic conflicts in Kuali on, on account of land. So there's a bit of aggressiveness approach to conflict, land conflict in Kuali. Look at Tanarima, for instance. There's always been a conflict in the Pokomos and the Kushites, uh, Kushitic uh, families uh, uh, that, that live there. Um, Lamu also has its issues because the borders Somalia. Uh, so if you look at uh, basically the stability uh, based on the Blue Economy Initiative and the stability uh, of land uh, ownership and investment destination, because you can't do an investment without land, uh, Cliff is the best. There may be one or two problems here and there, but we do think that um, that can be solved. I have met investors in Cliff. I have had dinner with them, and they've explained to me the problems. Uh, look. We have one of the plants in Kilifi that produces syringes that is used all over the world. Even as we speak, it exposed to Ukraine as aid because they, then UN is using it for all of export. In Kilifi, not another country, not another place in this country. That's what we need to support. Kilifi is, is the best destination. Look at its beaches. I do know that uh, there's been voting in the world that they've been saying uh, Shelly Beach, uh, Kuala has better beaches. Uh, it's because we have not marketed our beaches properly. If you look at Watamu, if you look at uh, at Bofa, if you look at Malindi, those are the best beaches you can ever have uh, in East Africa. But Zanzibar is a common place for names, for names and destination for tourism. So is uh, Kuala County, and so is Lamu, and Kilifi is ignored. I say that tourism is the backbone of Kilifi. We will revive tourism through deliberate marketing uh, of tourism in a destination out of this country as a county. And, and individually, I'll take the initiative uh, as, as a governor. I, I'm very passionate about the youth, extremely, extremely passionate. Um, you know what? Land is cheap, still cheap. If, like I said, there's a little bit of land. So if you want to benefit now before there's an aggressive uh, marketing of land so that then it becomes expensive like was done in the developments of the country, uh, we think that we can use the availability of land for purpose of creating um, sports infrastructure. For instance, a stadium in Nairobi and other parts of the country is very expensive because of that. There we can get it cheaply. An acre for one million is probably on the very high side of Kilifi. So if we got probably 10 acres or 20 acres per, um, per sub-county, we have seven sub-counties, 
it means we can have seven at, at the first financial year, seven stadiums uh, that are international. Um, you know, Qatar has produced a stadium very cheap because of the nature of uh, contemporary technology. We think we can do that in Kilifi, but when we do that, because of the fusion of the hotel industry, with the fusion of the of the beaches, with the fusion of the animal um, as uh, 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 wild animals as, and parks as um, uh, tourist attraction, and then we bring um, sports tourism. That combination of a circuit will be easy. We can attract uh, uh, teams that come here because of camping in Kilifi. We can attract uh, international uh, challenge uh, matches. Uh, for instance, uh, East African uh, Challenge Cup or African uh, African Challenge Cup. We know that we, we are good in sports. Kilifi has a good bank of youth that are very good in sports. We'll be improving through uh, such infrastructure. And it's not just football, because probably make mention of football because there is marketing in this country in the world. But we say uh, basketball, we are good at it. We are very good uh, uh, basketball um, players there that are good national. So, so, so youth are properly endowed in my regime and they can count on me. Um, I believe I'm closer to them than like any other person in the leader um, in the past or present or eaten. Now, um, uh, we have women. Women are my favorite uh, voters. Um, the reason is they are very settled, focused, and they only need to be uh, probably assisted, just a bit of it. And that little kick of assistance that they get, they usually roll out because they are the most disciplined in terms of uh, taking care of resources in those mobilized resources that we are giving. So we say the big fund concepts and the uh, grants as we will be here and there and forming them into groups as a woman must belong to a group as much as possible. Uh, and the youth also, of course. But the women easily transform families because of the way they engage and interface between uh, generations uh, and families basically. So if children go to school, the women must participate, food production, and so on and so forth. By the way, um, uh, irrigation is one of the areas in which we thrive best because uh, of the fact of the way they keep they keep the challenge of follow-ups and stability in terms of uh, entrepreneurs uh, as we crop up from place to place. That's, that I'm speaking from experience. So I do think that uh, we have a good measure of um, uh, our clientele based in women upon which we can uh, entrepreneur them and harness them and give them stability in production uh, of food and services and eventually we will transform that society. Uh, culture is good. Culture is good. I have, um, have participated recently where we had cultural exchanges between Poland and Kenya and we are trying to come up with uh, the cultural centers and mobilization. Also a school that uh, trains in matters culture and research, especially up to university levels and beyond. Um, if we can get that in place and stick to research and endow the society with uh, uh, culture as they, uh, and stabilize the society through culture, such as has happened in South Africa, I've seen a uh, culture in South Africa is good. A bit of that is replicated probably in the Maasai uh, committee and folk. That is probably, uh, probably where we should get. But we want to go beyond that and to be a tool of trade for so mobilizing resources and attraction of tourism to the people of coast, especially uh, Kilifi. But secondly, is that it can be a source of employment um, and basically pride for the people of Kiev. Um, the handle concept is we, we intend to make to internationalize it so that then there's a handle competition at local level. But even those uh, beauty pageants that you see, uh, we can include the handle, which is basically um, the queen um, semblance of as well, the woman from Kiev. If we can get that into that international level, patent it and protect it. Uh, the Kanga we also protect it, the Kishutu we also protect it, um, and then internationalize it. What we need to have is that a vast raft of cultural, immense wealth that is coming from it. Uh, and, and I haven't mentioned um, uh, even our local heritage uh, in areas that uh, we can put, put them as a circuit and tourist centers. And, but of course, again, research, uh, mobilization, uh, and of course also employment. So I, I have. Um, quite a detailed approach to uh, how we harness culture, grow it, and mobilize our youth to love it, mobilize our women to love it, and basically all the people of Kilifi to be able to look at culture uh, as a distinction of who they are, uh, as against uh, uh, the rhetoric that it is subdued by poverty uh, and endemic, uh, endemic um, gestures of uh, 
uppercut approach of cal uppercut uh, uh, approach to culture it must be our distinction uh, in terms of lifestyle it must be a distinction uh, in terms of uh, uh, peace stability and basically um, attitude 